Hi everyone, welcome to another Naper tutorial from Not Real Engineering and this is the sixth part in Naper tutorial series. These are the five Naper tutorial videos which I created in this series earlier. All videos are already available on this channel. You can find the link to all these videos in the description box below. And also I have a video series on how to install Naper in three parts. First, how to install Ubuntu app if you want to install Naper on Windows machine. Second, how to install Jmesh which is necessary to use meshing. And third, how to install Naper itself. Now in today's tutorial, we are going to see how to create cylindrical or spherical shapes domain and also how to customize the cubical domain. So you can see three examples over here. The first example is customizable cubical domain. If you don't define any domain, the Naper will by default always create a microstructure in shape of perfect cube. So if you want to customize that cube, if you don't want all sides of that cube as equal, you can use this command. If you use this command, you can define sides of your RVE in X direction, Y direction and Z direction separately. This is one example and this is the shape you will get if you use this example. Then secondly, cylindrical domain. For that, you can use this word cylindrical and then you have to define the height and diameter. Again, this is one example. Height is 50, diameter is 100. And if you use this, you will get this shape over here. And finally sphere, you can use this sphere word and then you have to define only diameter. Again, one example over here, which gives us this microstructure. Now let's open Naper and see how to generate mesh and visualize all these three shapes. Over here on left hand side, I'm using Ubuntu app. And on right hand side, I have created one folder in my C drive. First thing is we have to go to this folder using this Ubuntu app. So for that, you have to type cd slash mnt slash c and then cd nre examples. Now we are in this folder. I have compiled all the commands what you will need in this file. This file is available for you to download from the GitHub profile of this channel. You can just use the link given in the description box below and you will find this file so that you can just copy paste these commands from this file to your command line. Now these two commands we already did. So first I will set number of threads to 8. This will tell Naper to use 8 cores. Next command is to create microstructure. Now in this first word Naper will call the software Naper. Next slash t represents the tessellation module. Using slash n you can define how many number of grains you want. In this case we are using 500 grains. And then using these domain command you can define the domain. You can either define it as cube along with three dimensions in the bracket or you can define it as cylinder along with two dimensions in the bracket or lastly sphere along with single dimension in the bracket. Now first we will see a cube with two sides as three and the third side as one. This slash o defines the output file name. Let me copy paste this command over here say enter and then you will see one tessellation file will get generated over here and to visualize this file we can use this second line in this we are using Naper's visualization module. The input will be the tessellation file which we just created. Next thing is we are defining the color of grains based on their ID. Then we are defining the transparency of grains. Here it is 0.5. If you don't want transparent grains, you can just remove this command altogether. I will show you the example of that as well. Then you can define the image size and the name of image. Now let's copy paste this command. You can see the image is created. Now these grains are 50% transparent so you can see through them. But if you don't want them to be transparent, you can just remove this command. So you can just delete this and then copy paste this command. I will just change this name of image as underscore two. Otherwise it will get overwritten. Say enter. And this is the second image. Here you can see grains are totally opaque. I will put this back over here. You can remove it if you want to. For meshing, we have to force Naper to run on single core if you are using Naper on Windows. On Windows, Naper will give you error while meshing if you use this number of threads more than one and then using this command, you can mesh the microstructure. Over here, this slash m means mesh module. This is the input file. This gives the order of element, which is two in this case. And finally, this let us define the mesh quality, which is one. That means the highest quality. If you copy paste this, it will start meshing and you can see it is running very slow. First it is doing 2D meshing 
it will go up to 100%, then it will go to 3D meshing, and then it will go to 100%. And finally, you will have your mesh file. So I have done this in many other tutorials. If you want to see details about this, you can see any other tutorial from the past. I am not going to do this right now because it will take a really long time. So I will just kill this and let's go to spherical and cylindrical domains. I will again put this number of threads back to 8 because we are not going to do any meshing. And for cylindrical domain, let's use this. Here the number of grains are 100 and the domain is cylindrical with height as 50 and diameter as 100. So I will copy paste this command over here. Now the cylindrical test file is generated. This is the incomplete mesh file. So we don't want that one. I wanted to show this cylindrical domain because while visualizing, we have to do something different here. If you use the same command from over here to visualize, then you will see some weird lines. And to get rid of those lines, you have to use this show edge equal to zero command. If you don't use this command, let me just get rid of this for a second. And without that, if you just visualize like what we regularly do. And if you create an image, what will happen is you will see these lines around the periphery of cylinder. So to get rid of these lines, you have to include this command show edge and inside the bracket cylinder equal equal to zero. Now if you use this command, let me copy paste this. I will change the image name again so that it will not be overwritten. Now in this image, you can see those lines are gone. You can again mesh this, but I'm not going to do this. It will take too much time for spherical domain. You have to define the domain as sphere with only one dimension inside. So let me copy paste this again. It has 500 grains. It created this sphere.test file and then to visualize, you have to use this line. And here also, if you notice, you have to use this show edge command. Again, if you don't use this command, you will get something like this. This is where you will see these lines again on the sphere. And to get rid of those lines, we have to use this show edge command. So in case of sphere, you have to define this option. Now, if I copy paste this with changing the name to two, you will get this much cleaner microstructure without those lines. Finally, these are the commands to mesh that spherical microstructure. Again, this file is available to download from the link in the description box below. If you find this video helpful, please like it on YouTube and don't forget to show your support by subscribing to this channel, which will give me motivation to create more videos. And you can check this channel's homepage where you can find many similar videos. Also, if you go to this playlist tab, here you can see the playlist of all Naper tutorials. If you are interested in crystal plasticity, I have a playlist for that as well and some crystal plasticity software tutorials and many more. Also, you can visit channel's GitHub profile and from here you can download all the codes which I used in different videos on my YouTube channel. You can find link of this GitHub profile in description box of this video. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.